Hello and welcome to another episode of Wedflix. I'm your host, Julia Brame. I'm the founder and editor of Brides Up North, the top UK wedding blog for Northern couples, and the editor of Unveiled Magazine, the luxury wedding magazine. Uh, today's episode, we filmed a little while back during full lockdown in the UK, and it's with a really fantastic photographer and great friend of mine, the inimitable Johnny Draper photography. In this episode, we talk about all sorts of things, uh, wedding photography related, and also some industry chit chat too. So I hope you absolutely love this episode as much as I enjoyed recording it. So hi, Johnny, welcome to Wedflix. Hello, thanks for having me. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. All things considered, obviously, lockdown and all that, but I mean, um, you know, there's worse things than having to stay in your own house and only go out for an hour a day to have to deal with isn't there you know so trying not to feel too miserable about it and there's a lot of people out there doing um a lot of um, more important things than i am at the moment for for the good of um this whole situation so hats off to to those guys who are putting themselves out there on the front line you know we've just got to sit here haven't we so can't sit can't here and chat much. chat weddings all day long um exactly. yeah and you do look like you've got a good supply of alcohol behind you there are those empty bottles? Uh, well, there's a few that haven't got as much in as I would have liked by now. Um, so we might have to do a little top up. But uh, yeah, my majestic orders uh, keep arriving week after week. So as long as the red wine keeps coming in, that's the main thing. Well, it's good to hear that you're propping up the economy. Um, <laughs> so today we're going to have a bit of a deep dive into your business. You're a fantastic wedding photographer and you're well known in the industry as one of the top guys to come to for either weddings or you did do um, some photography training back in the day and or continuing with mentoring at the moment. Um, so tell you what, why don't you introduce yourself and your business? Oh, okay. Uh, right. Uh, uh, it's ridiculous that I've forgotten my own name to start with. So I'm, <laughs> I'm Johnny Draper. I'm a wedding photographer. I've been shooting weddings for uh, over 15 years. Um, and... Yeah, as you say, I, I did some training and workshops for four or five years, actually. And I haven't done one for 18 months, two years now, because I started doing some one-to-one uh, -one mentoring alongside that. I think the thing I was always really conscious of was I didn't want that to overtake shooting weddings. That was always the, the most important part of my business and what I'm most passionate about. So it was great having some time to be able to do some of the workshops, um, but the, I think the mentoring, the one-to-one -one stuff is something I've enjoyed more because you get to really delve into somebody else's business a little bit more, in a bit more detail. Um, whereas the workshops you are, were literally putting on a, a one-off event that was, you know, a, a full day or a half day, sometimes a couple of days. Um, but they were for groups of people. So you, as much as I tried not to overfill them so that I could give people time on a one-to-one -one basis on those obviously you are always limited if you've got eight or ten or sometimes 12 people there in one day um, it's difficult to divide your time up between them all equally so those those sort of programs were written for the class rather than for individuals and as I say now mentoring one-to-one -one stuff really gives you the opportunity to to properly get stuck into where people are and ultimately where they want to be yeah so going right back to the start talking about other people's businesses but let's dive into your business first so how did you get into wedding photography uh, i'll do the short version because otherwise it takes forever uh i worked at an ad agency in manchester um i worked in the tv production department now uh, i used to do filming and editing non-broadcast stuff um things for corporate events um sort of two or three the majority of the stuff i was doing was two or three minute videos that were usually put on after lunch to try and wake people up and make them excited about the next part of the day um and that was in a nutshell what i did a long time ago somebody who i worked with was getting married came into my room one day and said oh you film and edit stuff do you want to come and film my wedding i was like yeah, okay, I'll come and do that, give it a go. I'd never even been to a wedding, never mind film. <laughs> Are you joking? I had no idea, like, even what happened. I understood that people got married, but I didn't understand the format of the day. 
And um, yeah, I just turned up and shot this wedding. And it's a long time ago. That, that was over 20 years ago. And um, yeah, produced this, this kind of three minute highlight of their wedding day on DVD. Cause I basically just used all the stuff that I had at my disposal at work. And again- Was it any good? It, for, for the time and for what I charged them, which was a hundred <laughs> quid, it was magnificent. And the reason it was magnificent was because I had no idea of the value of what I actually produced for them until I found myself a bit deeper into the industry. So as I say, I shot and edited all this stuff and gave them this DVD. And a few months later, when my phone you know, didn't stop ringing off the hook because all these mates of mates had seen this DVD and went, 100 quid? Yeah, we'll book him and would just ring me up and go, yeah, can we book you for our wedding? Like, great, yeah, 100 quid on the day, amazing. And all of a sudden I was really busy doing weddings. And then you meet other people at weddings, like photographers I was meeting, and they were like, you only charge 100 quid? And they're not getting a VHS, they're getting a DVD. And I'm like, what, people still get VHS? And they're like, yeah, everybody gets VHS. It's like eight hour VHSs. And the people at the time who were getting DVDs, the people who were producing them were charging a fortune because it was, it was a, a new technology, really, to be able to do it at home. Um, and I didn't value that because I had all this kit at work that I could use. So I then realized I was massively undercharging and over delivering compared to, you know, what other people were getting. Um, so I kind of changed a few things around. Uh, I also pay, started paying a lot more attention to actually what was going on at weddings. Once I got my head around, this is how a wedding day works. I wanted to shoot everything documentary, so I didn't ever want to do anything like weird or cheesy for the camera. And I think, again, at that time, there was a lot of interaction with the video camera, as it were, um, on wedding videos. So I was trying to shoot documentary stuff. And then you, you'd meet photographers. And again, at that time, there was a lot of um, traditional photographers knocking about still. It was before digital, so people were still very much getting 36 prints in an album, after their wedding and it was you know a bit in the ceremony some church doorway shots with friends and family um, a mock cutting of the cake shot at the reception venue and then that was it you know that is what you got whereas I was sort of on this transitional course yeah so I remember when I launched my blog back in 2010 it was um documentary style photography was it was a pretty new thing really um and we still had kind of like a mix of traditional styles and then this really cool new documentary style that now we're all really used to. Yeah. So, I think yeah. The, the sort of era of digital helped to pioneer that because people weren't as um, limited as to how many frames they could shoot at a wedding. They, they didn't have to kind of go, oh my God, I've only got two rolls of film and I must get the yeah. first kiss, bride and groom walking back up the aisle, these 12 family photographs, and then all of a sudden you're running out of shots. Whereas the digital, that dawn of digital, gave people so much more freedom to shoot other stuff outside of that. The first time I really noticed it was I met this husband and wife team at a wedding I was videoing at. And, it, and a lot of things kind of clicked in my head after I worked with these guys. They were the first couple who I worked with who were there all day. Um, they did, weren't just doing that and because they were shooting on digital. So I was like, really, oh, wow, you're shooting digital? That's really expensive as well at the time. It, I mean, it's not cheap to buy decent equipment now, but it is very, very much more affordable. Um, at the time, it was crazy money. And the other side of things clicking in my head when I met them was how they actually were with their clients, the bride and groom, and the friends and family at this wedding. When we sat down during the wedding breakfast to kind of have a bite to eat ourselves and have a break, you know, it was the first chance I had to say hello properly to them and was just sort of picking their brains about stuff. And I said, oh, so obviously you've known these guys for years then. And they were like, no, just, um, they just booked us, you know, last year. And I went, oh, so you're not like friends of the family or anything? No, no, they're just one of our clients. And it really, like, really confused me because like, everyone loves them. Like, all these people, it's like they've known them forever, but they've only met all these people today. But everyone's responding so positively to them. I, I'd never seen that. When yeah. All I'd seen was this traditional way of doing stuff. 
And straight away, I was like, oh, that's what I want. I want to do that. I want to have that connection with couples where they book you, obviously, because they, the, they love your work, but because they can see you being there at their wedding with them the whole time, and they can see you fitting into their group of friends and family. And they were a massive inspiration um, to me and my business. And I worked with them a couple of times, and then they shot Emma and I's wedding um, because I, nice. I, I was like, Jonathan Christie. Who, who are they? Who, are, who is this? They don't, they don't shoot weddings anymore. Um, <laughs> Jonathan Harris, he's called, um, and his wife, Christine. And they're amazing, but they, they do uh, business consultancy now. And right. so they were sort of my original mentors. They then shot our wedding, and I wanted to then move over to Stills because I just I was inspired by them and inspired by the opportunity to, um, to start working in that way when there was nobody doing that around you know this neck of the woods as well yeah. so, um, so how, how did you book your first work then how did you go from kind of wanting to do it and being inspired to do it and knowing I, it's, it's interesting because I can totally see how your strategy evolved and like it comes through in everything you do that that way of working is very much at the forefront of everything you've done and you were a trailblazer in that for a long time other people are kind of picked up on it now and they have their own way of doing it as, as always happens but you know, when I thought about someone I wanted to talk to for this sort of interview about about how you develop your branding, your own set of style and stuff, you were first in my mind because this is something I've seen you do so effectively. Um, so yeah, how did you go from having that idea to have to booking your first wedding shooting stuff? It sort of it, it. I cheated because I'd accidentally stumbled into the video stuff and ended up doing so many weddings video wise that I'd already got into groups of friends and families and I I just shot the first five or six weddings for free as stills and I because I knew that there was people out there connected to people I'd already done work for who would actually go what he'll do it for free we weren't even going to have anybody never mind have somebody for free yeah brilliant so really really quickly I had something I could cobble together as a portfolio um, and then it was, you know, it was begging, stealing and borrowing contacts and, and asking friends to recommend you and, you know, all that sort of stuff. It sounds really simple. It's not as easy to do as that because, you know, your friends get bored of <laughs> yeah. sharing. Yeah. I, I, again, the, a part of the dawn of social media happened to be sort of trying to do stuff around that sort of time as well. So I think I joined Facebook in 2007 um and that was yes that's 13 years ago and i'd already i started shooting stills probably a couple of years before that but that really massively helped the first mm. couple of years being able to set up a business page but i don't think i set up a business page initially i think i was just sharing it on profile but because it was this new platform um people were sharing and they were they were excited to see what you were doing and you know i i had a a core of friends and family who shared everything, who commented on stuff, who sent my pictures to their friends who they knew were getting married. And it's, it's not quite as easy as that these days because social media consumes everybody. And it's very difficult to be seen in a such a crowded place. Yeah, I think yeah. we're more used to the techniques used as well. It's, it's not so... What's really interesting about what you were saying about your story then is when you said, you know, I shot friends of groups of friends so you get into a wedding and then you'd hope that you kind of be shooting all the bridesmaids weddings and that is something that I hadn't really seen before than when I started working with you that because you got that uh, kind of like back and forth going with the couple and the bridesmaids and it was all a bit of a laugh and a bit of fun and you kind of almost like flirting with the bridesmaids and stuff like that don't tell Emma but, you, <laughs> but you, you know what I mean like you've got that banter going and it's cheeky and it's fun and it's relaxing on the wedding morning but then those you know bridesmaids interestingly not it's not just the bridesmaids though if you can get on with mm. the lads if you can go meet a group of lads oh, yeah. in the pub beforehand and they come out of that and they remember that it wasn't really awkward they didn't feel like a dickhead and they they are next to be getting married they go he was all right actually Compared yeah. to my mother's wedding last year where we got, you know, we weren't even allowed to have a drink because we all had to stand in a line all day. Just little things like that, you know, having that mu much more of a real life connection with people 
Mm-hmm. Because even now, people still go to these weddings where brides and grooms get dra- dragged off for hours and hours and a drinks reception turns into a time that everyone's waiting instead of it being a drinks reception where you should be having a drink and, and enjoying yourselves. And if I can allow my couples to be at their own wedding, it reflects massively positively and still deliver everything that they want. It reflects massively positively on me and what I do. And mm-hmm. I will pick up other work because everyone, as I say, even now, is still going to weddings and still having those experiences where they don't see people all day and they don't want that for themselves. So it's, it's everybody who you can connect with on the day is super important. Yeah, because it's interesting because you're, first and foremost, you're there to do a job for your couple, but then you can, you know, you can also use it as a networking opportunity. It's, it's, a, it's a different way of looking at things. We were talking, obviously my business runs, well, normally, not in lockdown, but we normally run wedding shows. And I was saying to someone the other day that actually with a wedding fair, it's kind of like, two ways of looking at it one you're there to talk to brides so that's your ultimate goal but two you can also network and talk to all the other suppliers that are there make some different connections you come away with a bank of connections that actually might get you as many bookings as talking to the brides does it's about looking at things just with a slightly different viewpoint sometimes and how you can get the most out of every situation i think for your yeah. business so I'm what's just, your well what's can i just one? can i follow on from that because you'll mm-hmm. remember whenever emma and i have done your shows in the past that I always get my ass kicked by Emma for not doing enough graft, helping with loading in and packing up and all that, and spending too much time talking to everybody else in the room. Yeah. I always stress her how important that is. Actually, you know, seeing people and sometimes it's meeting brand new people you've not met before or somebody who you've met through social media but haven't met face to face. And those new connections can go on somewhere down the line to be a massive part of your business you just don't know and I think it Absolutely. is super, super important it's also about in that sort of scenario like whether at a wedding with other suppliers and it's other suppliers at the wedding too isn't it people you come into contact with like the makeup artist the hairdresser transport people you know the list goes on but it's about kind of not being a dick really and about kind of like being nice to people you know helping where you can so you might want to carry a box in for someone apart from your wife obviously <laughs> but you know, it's about kind of helping out way and just being a cool person at the end of the day and cracking a few jokes and being memorable in that way. Whenever we go on a styled shoot, I'm talking too much, I'm meant to be interviewing you, but when we go on a styled shoot for Unveiled, for example, I think because of the whole like magazine editor and a winter vibe, people expect it to be like quite a serious sort of up its, up its own bum situation um, where everyone's kind of really taking themselves too seriously and being like in fashion, darling. But actually, like, we all have a laugh, we have a joke, like, I've got the broom out most times, sweeping up the floor, and it's, everyone looks in, and at the end of the day, we all come out of it, like, friends, and, you know, we have a great time, so it's just about being cool. Yeah, and I think the more that you enjoy yourself when you're actually working at a wedding, on a shoot, whatever it is, the more you put into what you're actually doing as well, you know, because if you're enjoying yourself, it's, it's not difficult to do the job. Mm. I think you go into, you know, if I, I've always said, you know, you can't work in weddings full stop. Never mind being a wedding photographer if you don't love weddings. There's mm. no in between. You've got to love them because otherwise you'd hate them because they're so intense and they're so, they're so far removed in some ways from real life. They're such an extreme version of, of everything positive that goes on. God, they're so much fun though, aren't they? They're amazing. But <laughs> oh God, I can't wait to go on wedding after feel, this. Oh, no. I, honestly, I've been missing weddings so much the last few yeah. years, genuinely. I mean, the seeing in my diary, you know, dates for, oh, tomorrow I was supposed to be, uh, you know, mm. this, this weekend, the two weddings I was supposed to have on, on Saturday and Sunday. I'm like, we were meant to have our Wedstock show this weekend. Oh, killer. How I feel. But uh, the weather is bad. Yeah, it's not as good First as, time as it has in been. five years it's going to rain. So it makes, it makes you feel a bit better about it. Makes you feel so much better about it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but yeah it is it's, it's about kind of so i guess what's your style then because i know your style but tell us what your what you think your style is when you're shooting a wedding like really the difficult. images and the way you work it's really difficult because i think it's always really difficult talking about your own work um that when i whenever i do mentoring um that's something i try and get across to people it is really difficult to look positively at your own work but once you can get over the fact that you have to be positive about what you're producing. You have to believe in it because that's the only way you can sell it to a bride and groom. Then you're halfway there. Once you believe in, in what you're doing. 
Um, so my style, I guess, I try and shoot as much documentary as possible on a wedding day. I know that that's what the majority of my brides and grooms want. They want to feel like the, that they're at their own wedding. They want great documentary photographs that show what a great time everyone had, what a great time they had in amongst it all. Um, they want to tick, you know, some of the important boxes as well. So, you know, I'd never don't do group shots ever. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I don't do loads, um, but I don't restrict people either. My couples are really sensible. They understand that it's about getting that balance right. If they, if they do 30 group shots, that's all they're doing in a drink reception. And nobody wants that. They, like I said before, they want to have a drink with everyone and spend time with everyone. But also by being at their own wedding, that's how you create moments to shoot in documentary. Yeah, you get um, better group shots, really, but they're like just not staged. Yeah, so it's kind of getting that balance right. And then I guess people want something that a lot of my brides and grooms say they don't want anything like too posy or anything like that, mm -hmm. but they do want some um, photographs of the two of them. But then they a lot of them will then start pointing at like photographs with smoke bombs in and like great yeah. lighting or you know sunset drama uh, dramatic sort of sunset skies and i'm like all right okay um so again yeah. like my style and what i put out there is you know it is about fulfilling that documentary brief overall but also just putting people's own stamp on it and going yeah, that's going on our wall. Um, yeah, that yeah. Was on our wedding day. Look how awesome we look. Um, and yeah, it's kind of throwing a little bit of that in, I guess, as well. I would say as well that like your kind of editing style, I guess, is very real, but it's also got like richness to it. Is that would you say that's right? Like, would you color? I would say when I think of your photography, and I've looked at your photographs for many years now, I think it's colorful. Even uh, though you work in black and white as well, I think color, I think depth, richness. And, and fun and kind of but you do have those like dramatic beauty shots as well and I think you were the, one of the pioneers of smoke bombs right Am I, I mean, I'm giving you too much of a or is it just yours that I saw it in? I think I invented them do you yeah. think <laughs> I don't think I actually invented the smoke bomb itself uh, mm. but I certainly remember having to go to the at the time the deepest depths of the internet to find these Mm. smoke bombs and I think the first set I ever got were from um, what turned out to be a Polish football hooligan website <laughs> was shipped over. I was like wow okay because you couldn't get so like you can get you like, should have gone into business with that yeah maybe but it, the daddy's yeah. get now so um, well, it... yeah I mean they're, they're fun and I think sometimes when I do stuff with smoke at weddings it it helps people kind of go uh, get over that um that way of thinking about oh we've got oh we've got to go and have our pictures taken now and mm -hmm. it transforms into we're going to set fire to some stuff now yeah and it's, i don't it's, think I mean, it's outdated it's i think we've seen it i think we've seen it like for quite a lot of years now but it's still on the day for your wedding it's still super yeah. fun it's like yeah. things like a confetti cannon is super fun yeah. no matter how many times you set one off yeah i also fun. think you sorry go on johnny no i was gonna say you know stuff like that you know you get like hardcore documentary wedding photographers who you know decide that oh, I'm an artist I'm not a photographer you know that sort of thing mm -hmm. and that's great if they've got their you know sort of approach and style and belief in what they do but you know sometimes people get they have no place at a wedding they don't mean anything you know I'm like sometimes they mean that a lot of people run around laughing their heads off and you know if I hadn't like busted these smoke bombs out maybe that wouldn't have happened so yeah. you know everything's got a place at a wedding if it's right for that couple on that day. I don't do smoke bombs every week. I can't remember the last time I did a smoke bomb. It, it wasn't this year. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it was back end of last oh, year. I'm disappointed by that. No, I, th I actually think it was, uh, it was our, <laughs> our good friend, Andy Murphy, was helping me with the smoke bombs on this particular mm. wedding, um, running around. It was a winter wedding, so I was using the smoke to um, form like a wall of smoke behind the couple, and I lit it through them so I needed him to run around between the flash and the couple <laughs> waving smoke in the air so you don't see him um but he was there in the photographs um but yeah there's there's really kind of dramatic ways of using them like that there's really like fun ways but the stuff you were saying before just about color and and richness and stuff um it's interesting you said that because I'm working on my new website during lockdown and I've started pulling together um 
obviously homepage sort of hero shots gallery stuff and that's difficult that's difficult you know when you're shooting 50 60 weddings a year trying to put in front of people what you think is your best work and what you think represents what you do so that the right people book you is mm. really difficult um my, the homepage image on my current website has been on there for seven years and i haven't changed. i know what it looks like and I'm it's, so a, it's a dance floor shot isn't it yeah, it's so, it is. And that dance floor shot spawned a million of those dance it floor did. shots. But it was, was a real shot. That's one of your classic images. So you have a couple of classic images. The smoke bomb. I'd say the, I'd say the bridesmaid and the grooms when in the morning, some sort of fun kind of shot where they're kind of a little bit like in relief and back from each other. But you definitely do the smoke bomb. You do the brilliant pops of light on the dance floor, which I love. And there was well, one that, other one. That one I can't think what it is. As I say, it spawned a load more. People were like, I love that. I want that at my wedding. I was like, shit, that's, a, that's actually genuinely a real moment. You know, I'd mm. set the flashes up and I was shooting the first dance. The band announced everybody to join the bride and groom on the dance floor. Everyone piled on the dance floor and I happened to just be in the right place at the right time as they kissed and I had my camera up high so I got a really wide shot of all these other people on the dance floor as well. And it was just perfect timing basically which doesn't happen every single week you know you you aim for that you anticipate mm. moments and you know you hope you're going to be in the right place but you can't recreate that either so it's really difficult to do when somebody says oh i love that shot i want that and you're like but that was a real moment you know but you know what going to your, to your website that's really i think you should leave it on there because that's really and with others maybe on a reel but i think that's really strong branding because the fact that Think how many photographers I work with in my business, even though you're a mate of mine, but I don't go to your website every day. And the fact that I could, without you telling me, I could say what your lead shot was on your website is incredible. And also that's a shot that whether through your photography training or through people looking at what other people are doing, that's a shot I see a lot now in weddings, the two flashes set up behind. And every single time, no matter who shot that wedding, I think, oh, that's a Johnny Draper shot. <laughs> do you see what I mean so it's like Johnny Joe in my head because of that shot and, and a little bit of the smoke bombs but um yeah I think it's a good branding thing so yeah so your, your colors yeah it's yeah, difficult but the, but yeah. the whole richness thing I, I was talking to Emma about it because I was struggling to right, where do I start where do I start pulling the actual physical content together and how do I decide what goes where so we talked about you know what do when I get an email with an, in, an email inquiry with a bit of content in that, you know, is from a bride that says, oh, I love your work and I really love X, Y, Z about it, you know, and mm -hmm. what's the stuff that people repeatedly say? And it is stuff like that, you know, look, oh, I really love the striking rich colors and stuff like that. So that's kind of, you're like, I kind of need to go down that route then, don't I? Because that's what people are identifying that they like. Yeah, um, that's your brand. That yeah, your I would brand say too. that. That one photograph that is on there right now, I'm just like, oh. Leave it on. Oh, so hard to... Look at this, yeah. it's, become a, it's become a web consultation. But um, <laughs> I think a brand, for anyone kind of getting into photography or someone who's in photography at the moment but feeling a bit lost on where they fit into the marketplace, I think that is a really good question to ask yourself. If someone was going to describe my work or why do they book me, these are the three things or three to five things that, you know, they identify with. So for you, I would say fun is number one for you. Fun, personality, that it's you that they're booking because they think you're going to add fun to their wedding. It helps that you can produce amazing shots huh. as well. But I think fun is the first thing. If I were getting married, ooh, through that style and brand that you've developed, how do you then kind of, sort of carry on that conversation for the initial branding how do you carry it on then with your couples so how do you form a relationship based on their initial perception with your couples we go for a drink very important um at the moment difficult um, he's not actually joking when he says that <laughs> no not at all not at all no, no it's, it, uh, for me it like i said right from the beginning it's about a connection and you can't you can't get the same connection over Skype or FaceTime. It's great at the moment, you know, because there are still people, you know, I had two meetings last night for October weddings next year. You know, people are still cracking on. Great, you know, as long as everyone's sensible, this will all be over and done with sooner rather than later and we can get back to weddings. Um, but 
it's a sacrifice for me. I love going and sitting down and having a beer or a gin and tonic or a glass of wine with new couples and getting across to them that this isn't a sales pitch. I genuinely want to know about your wedding day and I want to know about it because it's got to be right for me as well as you two. You know, it's sort of a two-way interview. I don't, I don't say that directly. I don't want people to feel like they're being interviewed. <laughs> no pressure. It's absolutely what it is. You know, it's, it's a fact-finding mission for both parties. They've both got to kind of be able to sit down across from a table with each other and, and imagine being there on the wedding day together. And yeah, because at the end of the day, if, the, if you're not connected, if you're not clicking, then you're not really going to want to shoot that wedding because it's... Yeah, and it's, it's not even just that. It's if you do go and shoot, they go, oh, well, they're nice people and I'm sure it'll be a nice wedding. That connection is what elevates all the other stuff. The connection with them runs through their bridal party and it runs through their immediate family. And, you know, nothing makes me happier on a wedding day when I turn up in the morning. And I, this sounds really deaverish. I don't mean it like this. But I go to mum's house or I go into the hotel room or the bridal suite where they're getting ready and mum opens the door or chief bridesmaid or sister of the bride or dad and he goes, oh, you must be Johnny. Look, I've heard lots about you. Lovely to meet you. Mm. Because it shows how much the bride and groom care about who they've booked on their wedding day. You know, it, that, I won't be exclusive to that or for people like that. They will have told their friends and family about everybody that they've got there on their wedding day because they're excited about it. But you're way ahead of halfway there at that point. Yes, like, yes and no though, because yes and no with that, because you do take the time to forge that relationship. And I think it'll be the people who have taken the time to forge that relationship that people will be excited about. Um, and it actually does partly work for you because if you are rocking up on the day and they're excited to see you, then they're going to be much more amenable to, you know, like trying a fun shot out or, you know, coming outside when it's nice light or whatever you want to do. They're going to know that, you know, that, that they're on board, aren't they? They're yeah. already invested in the process and they're also much more likely to like the results as well yeah. because you, it, like, it knocks on to every single stage and then eventually more likely to recommend you and share the pictures and exactly. all that sort of stuff. Yeah. So social media then, talking about sharing pictures, has been, I would say like hugely instrumental in your success yeah i would agree um i think like, was that deliberate or has it happened by accident or a bit of both yeah definitely more deliberate in recent years initially like i talked about before joining facebook in 2007 i joined it because i got an invite from somebody that's how it used to work you'd get an invite and you'd join and all of a sudden your mates were on there you could send each other messages and you used to be able to wave at people do you remember that Joel old school I do. I'll throw a sheet I, I, was, I was a solicitor back then working in a law firm many hours of billable hours were lost to yeah I'm sure. I'm sure. but at that <laughs> sorry, point you know sorry, old job. there's no there's, you've absolutely no idea but that, that that is going to end up being a positive thing for your mm. business um because it was such a new concept a new time for everybody um, and I think then as as it developed uh, as they introduced business pages and as you saw your other you know you, you sort of your peers and contemporaries you know wedding I remember this is hilarious there's a venue that was um it wasn't National Trust but it was some kind of heritage venue um over on the filed coast I won't say who it was um, and not that I don't think I don't think it'd be a problem because I don't think they do an awful lot. But the the girl who ran their weddings at the time, um, who actually we stayed in touch with through Facebook. I say we, me and Howard Wing, um, stayed in touch with her because we both met her back in the day um, at an open day there. Anyway, she was responsible. Um, she was doing like a um, a uni events management course and, and working at this venue was like her year in yeah coursework employment running stuff it just happened to be a wedding venue and um she set up a facebook page for them when 
all that sort of stuff started happening and a Twitter account and the people who ran the heritage side of things made her close it because yeah. they're like we don't think it we don't think it's the right um, One brand. Sort of thing to be doing for this because all they were interested were were like running like these afternoon teas to getting people who want to come and walk mm. around the grounds and have a look at the the stained glass windows and stuff it was hilarious anyway me and Howard stayed in touch with her and we shot her wedding last year I oh, shot right. her and we sang at her wedding and she bought a dress from Emma so you know oh, you me like back in the day and you we got on really well with her um stayed in touch and and yeah ended up being involved in her wedding so big up Christy from uh whoop, whoop. From the venue that won't be named um, but she got married <laughs> at Ditchbury House it was lovely absolutely lovely oh yeah one but, of yeah, my favorite venues what what, the, what was this question I've forgotten the question. social media so I was going to say so moving out of the past <laughs> to the present day um you make it sound Johnny like you were like literally like it was wartime and like you know it's the 1950s and you know like we're already talking that 15 years ago let's yeah. just, <laughs> for everyone watching Johnny is not weirdly young looking for his age he is actually his age <laughs> yeah I've had a lot of work on um <laughs> but you know, so I was asking so now with your use of social media kind of do you have a strategy like what's your vibe what's your yeah I think my strategy overall is um quality over quantity don't get hung up on numbers of likes and share oh, no. things like that because that will just break your heart because you will look at what other people are doing and getting and you'd be like, how are they getting all these likes? And do you know what? It doesn't matter. If what you're yeah. doing is yielding results, then you're getting what you need from it. You know, I, right. I likes need... are not bookings. Exactly. You've got to remember exactly. that. Um, I think the strategy overall is post good content, post content that is a reflection, a true reflection of what you actually do. Mm -hmm. And probably more importantly, what you actually want to be booked for so that the right couples find you and, and book you for seeing what you're putting out there. Um, it's really difficult um, because it can be really time consuming as well. So I go in fits and starts of, right, I am going to do a day at my desk and I'm going to pull a load of content together. I'm going to airdrop it to my phone. I'm going to stick it in loads of different folders specific to venue so that I've got a load of stuff on there. So at night when I'm cooking dinner or sat on the sofa watching Netflix, I can get some Insta story yeah. without having to think too much about what have I posted, what haven't I posted. Um, I think Insta Stories has been a massive thing for a lot of people. It's, it's massive for me. Um, it generally... I think you have the sort of personality that was instantly, you had that instant kind of like connection with the Insta Story because you were being real already in your like Facebook posts or Instagram posts. I think, I think that's interesting that you mentioned that. I think it's your social media account should always be a true reflection of, of who you mm. are in real life. I think if you um, end up at a networking event or even just a wedding uh, or, you know, a shoot or whatever, and you meet a person oh, God, and, yeah. and nothing like what they post, totally agree. you're like, what is going on? It, it freaks you out. Do you know what I mean? Also, I think it must be so hard. I, someone... People ask me like, how do you, how have you had such, such, such like success, say on Instagram with brides at North? And I'm like, well, and, and how do you think of stuff to post or whatever? And I'm like, it's literally like breathing. It's literally like having a chat with your mum or your best mate. Like I just go blah, 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 blah. This is what I'm thinking today. I don't schedule because I think it sucks the life out of it. But I do sometimes do what you do and like drop a load of content and think I'll do that later. Like here's some cool images, save them, favorite them or whatever and use them later but yeah it's and, and you know if, if i've got an event coming up obviously there's a bit of scheduling around that but more often than not it's just a stream of kind of consciousness but like we were saying earlier i just love weddings so goddamn much that it just kind of that's what i do so i'm yeah. just talking about what i love i think kind of related to that and it works differently with different businesses within the industry i think and different industries overall but I changed, I stopped using my Instagram account for everything about three years ago. 
and I've mm. set up a, like a personal Instagram account because I think my photography Instagram account is for wedding photographs, basically. Originally, I set it up, it was just like another Johnny Dre photography thing. So I was like, oh, well, I've always been, social media should reflect your true personality, blah de blah But I do think there's a good argument to say not necessarily all of your wedding clients want to see what you're having for your dinner or where you're out eating. Yeah. On your, on your um, feed, sometimes on your stories. Yeah. I think it works well there. But generally, I've mainly set up now to just, I'm, I'm literally just weddings on that to make it clear and defined. And, and I found that works well. Every now and again, big, I, I, big life things. So when, when Alfie yeah. came along last year, I did a post about that. It was Emma's birthday last year. So I did a post about that. And, you know, but yeah, I, think a little bit, I, would, I would say a little bit of personal content because. People like to see a real face. They like to see behind the business. So we drop a bit of personal in there. Um, I have a, pers- a personal, personal one where for me, the <laughs> weirdly, it's like the total opposite to my uh, work one because with the work one, obviously we're a blog. We want engagement. We want followers. So we're always looking for new followers. With my work, with my personal, the less followers, the better. <laughs> Literally, I could just reduce it down to just me following me and I'd be happy because it's a record of my children you know, stuff that I don't want to share with everybody. Um, I'd never share my children or my work, maybe one picture like you have, but I'd never overshare because I think it's dangerous. But I think, I think stories are a great way of balancing it. Like you say, I would never suggest getting, just making it an impersonal work profile. But I think if you can put your beautiful imagery for a photographer, beautiful imagery and you grade the odd personal thing and then use stories as a way to build that relationship. Yeah. It's a really nice way of doing it. It's almost like real life. You provide your wedding images and have the background chat with people. Yeah, so. I like the, and again, you get good, for, the nice thing about stories is you, you get people commenting because they know mm. that their comment isn't seen. So they will send you little messages. And you know, I usually my, my sort of approach with Insta stories on a wedding day is to document the day through Instagram stories as well, depending on, you know, it always being sensitive to what the bride and groom are happy with as well, of course. You know, sometimes there's a you no know, social media on the wedding day thing going on, which is fine. There's no problem with that. So I'll record stuff and then I'll share it the next day. But I think people like, especially the people who are getting married at that venue themselves, they like seeing almost other sides of it that they've not seen before because most of the time when you do a, you know if I'm doing a insta story to to you know to camera like that mm-hmm. there's a bit of venue behind them that they've not seen before because generally you're doing it in place you're not doing it in the middle of the ceremony room or in yeah. the, the wedding breakfast room you're doing it in a corner of the bar in between bits going on or you know a bit of the garden or whatever it might be and also your interaction with other suppliers who are there as well so yeah you know, so I, like I was going to say that so I feel like you've, I feel like your, your social media is clever and I can think of a few like campaigns that I feel like you run. Um, but I think your social media is clever because you're always remembering who, maybe you're doing this naturally, but from, from like a sort of an expert out looking in, you're always remembering kind of to tag venues, tag other suppliers, um, tag your upcoming couples as well as your bride and grooms so you're tagging people who are going to share and that's what it's about so if you're tagging a oh, brilliant wedding at say Meridale Manor brilliant wedding here today blah 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 blah. oh Natasha and Jason we can't wait for your wedding next year but look at what like Chris and Gemma had today and oh you know Howard Wing was here and Andy Murphy was here and the whole you know the whole lot of them and all those people who've been tagged in those various stories are then going to share that they're going to spread it. Yeah. That deli- that's deliberate, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, <laughs> I don't know why it wouldn't be. Um, it's not obvious to everybody. No. I mean, it's genuine. I'm not doing it solely for, I'm doing it because I want to do it. I'm doing it because I love being mm. there at amazing places with nice people. And I'm really lucky. It's so rare that I work a wedding where I don't know anybody at all on the wedding yeah. day, you know, because I mean, 90% of what I do is around the Northwest. So, and I've been around here for a few years now. So, you know, but also... It's the war. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you also, yeah, yeah, you deliberately move in circles with people who you like and people who you want to work with because, you know, those, you know, people you've mentioned already, the likes of Howard, Andy, Gavin, the boys from the Rush, Tom, oh, Hattie, yeah. and all those kind of people. Um, you work with them because you like their company. You like what they do. You believe in it. You know, I don't, just because they're my mate, all those guys are my mates because I met them through weddings. Yeah. Well, same them. with me and you. That's why we're yeah. friends. We're proper friends, aren't yeah. we? Yeah. And I don't recommend them because they're my mates. I recommend because my business is really important to me and, and doing the right thing for my clients is really important to me. I recommend them because they're amazing at what they do. And that's why mm. I met them originally and, and became friendly with them because I had a good connection with them. And that continues. And people love that. You know, it's the whole, you know, hashtag, hashtag dream team thing that people kind of buy into. Do you know what? The thing that is really interesting is people think that we all, this, this, a certain group of people are working together every single week. Mm. And so far from, from the case. Yeah, it's because you know, you're, good, you're all good at the sharing. Will, me and Tom Harrington will do 10 weddings a year. Oh, I love Tom Harrington. But that's probably eight weddings more than I'll do with another videographer. I might see another videographer once or twice a year through, mm. through the year. Um, same with Murph, you know, I'll do 10, 12 weddings a year with him. You yeah. Know. I can't get him on a gig. You know, half the time I recommend him to a bride and groom and he's already booked. Yeah. And I, you know, it's not just that way as well. You know, I get recommendations. I've had plenty of, plenty of recommendations from, from Andy, from Gav, from Tom, all those guys, Howard. They're brilliant at it. And as I say, you know, it's because we all want to work with good people. And genuinely, it brings the best out in what you do. And those couples who book in to groups of people who believe they've got the best for their wedding, they're super excited about having you all there. And, oh my God, we can't believe we, we managed to get you all, you know, like, like it's a miracle, you know, it's hilarious. But it makes you feel really good about yourself as well. It makes you feel like, yeah, I love these guys and I love how enthusiastic they are about everything and that this wedding is, is everything they want it to be because we're all here as well. And the same with yeah, the things, you, know, like you mentioned you married Dale and, and Carl Shaw, so Shelley and all the guys who work at those venues you know, Style Lodge, the high-end girls who work there, all these places are, are run by brilliant people and you love working there and you want to work, work there more. So yeah, part of the strategy from a social media point of view is of course sharing what you've shot there and your experiences there and, and trying to show people that, you know, the wedding day is, is not about all these suppliers just sort of lurking in the background. You know, if you get this this great team together, they're a massively important and integral part of your day and can be, you know, somebody who is good fun, not just, you know. Yeah, it's like your squad, isn't it? Your, it's your big day squad. Yeah, an extension think, of your bridal party almost. Yeah, to totally, because they're with you. Jenny Sword, the you know Jenny Sorden, don't you? I do, she's lovely. So, so Jenny, like last year, we had a wedding, me, Tom, uh, Andy Murphy was on it. It was at Merrydale Manor. Jenny Sordon was doing, um, she was going to sing the bride down the aisle and then she was doing the drinks reception. She rocked up in the morning, came up to bridal prep, had a glass of champagne with the girls. Love it. Oh my God, Jenny's here having a drink with us. But I mean, it's not that difficult to, you know, but brilliant from her point of view going, yeah. I'm here, I'm set up. So I'm going to go and say hello to the girls. They've offered me a glass of champagne, so I'm going to have a glass of champagne with them. They're now super excited about me being here. They were telling everybody, do you know what I mean? Simple, yeah, totally. Simple things. It's just and, about being a nice person and just like interacting really, isn't it? it seemed, but it's not, it's not obvious to everybody. You know, I actually have said to a few people, like, have a look at Johnny Drake and see how he does his social media. Watch what he does on stories. It's clever. It's, but it is genuine as well. It's kind of... I think, I think it has people, to be genuine, Jules, because otherwise oh, you sure. out. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but people can, people can learn from it in their, own, in their own way. That's what I was going to say. So it would be very easy for someone to think, oh, okay, I'll just copy what he does. But it's not going to work because, A, if you're tagging, oh, well, we've seen a bit of this before, haven't we? If you're tagging, you know, all Johnny's mates like Johnny does, they're going to say, hey, what, who's this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Equally, like, you know, if you rip off my blog or my magazine, I know you're doing it. And it just becomes, and so do my suppliers. It becomes a little bit icky. <laughs> but, but what you can, 
what you can do is learn from it and adapt it to your personality and adapt it in your own way. You So I mentioned before, I feel like you've run a few campaigns on your socials. But I think this might be just totally natural and then it became a thing. So, uh, but this is unique to you. So if someone kind of watching this chat and wants to get better at social media themselves, um, they need to adapt it for their own stuff and do their own things and have their own quirks. So one thing you definitely do is, or it became a thing, was the Jaeger. So Johnny, whether he does or he doesn't, I don't know if he does or not, loves Jaeger. There's some. Is it empty? This? Oh no, it's a full yeah. bottle. Yeah, there's, well, there's many of them. There's many of them down here. Many of them. Well, to be honest, Johnny, I think you might have a Jaeger room oh, in your house, right? This, this is my personal favourite. This one, this bride, and I've been sent many bottles of Jägermeister um, by brides and grooms as thank yous. This bride booked me. She worked for Jägermeister and she sent me a personalised bottle Ooh. with my name Wait on it. Wait a minute. Let's take a photo of this. Here he is. And interestingly, I told her, she didn't know about this because you ski, don't you? Oh, it's gone really, really oh, yes. fast now, this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, do you ski in Austria, darling? I do, darling. Yeah, so you know about the mini Jaegers, don't you? Mm -hmm. And the whole, like, banging them on the table, prost, drinking them. And on the mini Jaegers, they've all got um, numbers stamped in the bottom of the bottle in the factory, 1 to 99. And in Austria, they use that as a drinking game. All um, right. So you get challenged around the bar and you, you neck your shot. Nobody looks at the bottom and then you all look at the bottom and whoever's got the lowest number has to buy that round. So you get oh, high. That's cool. this one is number 51. Mm, don't like that. Wouldn't, I wouldn't have been happy getting that one. But um, so I told this bride who worked in marketing for Jägermeister, they had no idea about it. Jägermeister. Wow, okay. And nobody at Jägermeister could explain why they get stamped once in 99 on the bottom of the bottle. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, it was weird. So I told them and um, she fed it into some like... That's cool. With, with them all, but I don't know whether anything comes from that. But yeah, Should have got some permission there. <laughs> but what I was going to say is this, this Jäger thing. So you started to sort of say on social media that you love Jäger, you'd be having a shot of Jäger at the weddings, you'd be doing it with your brides, you'd be doing it with your industry friends, industry networking stuff. And you don't actually drink all this Jaeger, but then brides and grooms saw it as a thing. So just like it's happened here, brides and grooms then started to send Johnny Jaeger as their, sometimes they're like gift boxes, right? Yeah, yeah, here's one. <laughs> <laughs> like, as presents. So Isn't that kind of became part of, oh, look at that. Did, when I, when I went back to the then did you see that I'm actually wearing my tracky bottoms with my shirt <laughs> and my jacket? <laughs> I don't think we did. I don't think we noticed it. <laughs> but um, yeah, so, you know, it became a part of your brand. And obviously, Jaeger is synonymous with partying, having fun, blah, 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 whatever, however you want to put it. But that became part of your brand. Another campaign I think you run quite successfully is name checking your brides and grooms when they book you, particularly at a busy time of year. So like in January, after all the Christmas proposals, you're taking bookings left, right and centre. It's a busy time for you. And you name check every single one of your brides and grooms. That then creates a buzz and creates a momentum for people who are thinking of booking you to book you, right? Yep. Genius. <laughs> Look, do you know what? About all of this stuff, there's no such thing as, there's no new way of doing anything these no. days. There isn't. All you can do is adapt and take little ideas and, and use your own experience and do stuff that, like I said before, is a, a, an extension of your own personality and try and get that across. And however I can do that, that's what I'll do. And, and yeah, you're absolutely right. January in particular, you know, I'm, I'm really lucky. Touch Wood has continued to be for many years a, a crazy busy time of inquiries, of meetings. Um, I live in California, coffee and wine down the road in January, you know, three meetings a night for four or five nights a week. And it pretty much takes care of my next 12 to 18 months. Mm. That, that, three, four week period. And, you know, it's about not taking it for granted. It's not just, 
thinking, you know, it'll happen again. It's not assuming it's going to happen again. It's, it's understanding the reasons why it continues to happen and making sure you stay on top of that. Um, and that very much is attaching that, um, that personal um, nod to everybody um, to be sincere in being excited about the fact yeah, that- Yeah, exactly. Because well. you're genuinely, obviously excited by it. And that's how it's happened. That you're like, oh, brilliant. You know, Tina and Susan are getting married at XYZ venue. And you're sharing it. And everyone who's watching this is thinking, oh, brilliant. Like, this is an exciting time. So people are buying into that excitement. Yeah. There's, and it's working for you as well. Yeah. And, it's, a, and that's your personality. It's an excite. You're excitable. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a, a campaign I ran uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, based on, do you know what? A lot of the time, um, especially at the moment where new content is quite difficult to come across because obviously I'm not shooting weddings at the moment during lockdown. It's thinking a bit more about, right, what have I got already? What's going on? What are my brides and grooms up to? You know, I follow all of them on Instagram. They follow me back, keeping an eye on that sort of stuff. And there's always anniversaries popping up from last year and the year before. There's always opportunity to reconnect with people. And somebody, one of my brides and grooms, um, a recent bride and groom, Jess and Dan posted on their Instagram, um, their, their wedding photos that they put up on their well, almost all of their wall space in their house. They've done it beautifully, like got gorgeous frames, but I'd printed a shit ton of their photos out and framed them, ran down the whole stairs and landing, one wall in the dining room, I think, and another wall somewhere else. They looked great. And she tagged me in it, so I shared them and said, oh, wow, they look amazing. And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, I'm getting notifications on Instagram because I'd shared them on my stories, and it's other brides and grooms of mine commenting, going, Oh, well, there was quite a few comments going, oh, could you ask her where she got her frames from? So I, I got in touch and replied to all them. And I, I also replied when I said, this is where her frames are from and said, oh, if you do yours, make sure you send, you know, tag me yeah. in videos. Um, and the other messages that were coming in were other people who were, had seen it and then were sharing their pictures, were sending me a photo and going, we did this too, look at ours. And I was obviously then screenshotting it and resharing it and ended up sharing six or seven yeah, it's cool. I think I saw that. that. And, you know, people, I, the whole social media thing is a bit like, I think, the modern day equivalent of being in the local newspaper. If, you know, not on your own account, somebody else sharing it in a positive way about, you know, yeah. somebody who they have got a good connection with. So, you know, people look at... how goes back to the not worrying too much about figures and shares and likes, but how many, how many followers of Brides Up North got on, on Instagram? Ooh, um, hang on. And this is, this is genuine, I don't know. You're not, you're not hung up on it, but... No, I'm not hung up on it. It'll so be... Hang on, wait a minute. 39.4. I was going to say, ten, it was tens of thousands. Yeah. So you, you share a random bride's photo on there, if she's got 300 followers on Instagram and you're sharing it with 40,000, mm. she's in the air. She can't wait to tell everyone, tell all the friends and, oh my God, exactly. I'm famous on Brides of North. But it's the same with other suppliers as well. You know, if, if those Brides of Greens have connected with you and have invested in, you know, so much of, of their wedding it, into you and being mm. so excited about you being there, continuing that relationship with them is, is a really lovely thing. And the benefit of it from a business point of view is it will generate something else down the line. It will. I've done quite a few more um, family shoots recently. Um, I, don't, I only do family shoots for my brides and grooms whose weddings I've done. Um, I don't have time since, to do Since he's had a baby. Since he's had a baby. So. <laughs> no, I, I've done them, but, but I've never <laughs> really shared them that much. And every now and again, I'll share them. A bit like christenings. I'll do christenings for brides and grooms. But I always forget to share them because it's, it's not the main part of my business. But whenever I share a christening photograph or a family shoot photograph, boom, inbox explodes from my other couples. Oh, didn't know you did family shoots. Yeah, come, of course you did. Because, you know, we, we were going to get something done and, and they want to come back to you because they liked what you did as well. So I think it's so important what you're saying is that the connection doesn't end with delivering the photos after the wedding. I think that's so important. It's such a trick that people miss if you can keep that relationship and do things like what you're doing, then of course they're going to share it. And then of course their friends are going to see it. And then who's going to be in their friends' minds 
when it's time to look for wedding photographers you know nowadays brides have got so many you know with what we have online all that stuff we've got so many more outlets kind of finding a wedding photographer in the olden days when you did used to just take the one your friend had but i think it's still a case of you're going to search the person who's in your head you know and probably fall in love because that's the kind of the that's where you're at in your thinking process isn't it so yeah the aftercare is just as important it's just about having a real relationship yeah and translating that into however you know in real life and online and on email and in however however else you want to do it um, yeah and that's key, I think. Um, okay, so taking it right back to basics, what would be your kind of top three social media do's and top three social media don'ts? Um, okay. Well, it's diff- that's a difficult question because a lot of the do's are sort of the exact opposite of the don'ts. So that's fine. The stuff that springs to mind straight away is do be the real version of you we talked about this earlier don't be that person who people don't recognize in real life um because it's unless you really want to freak people out and that's yeah well it's confusing (laughs) it is confusing you know if you you know there's a million different ways of being a different person on social media to how you are in real life um i particularly like it when people photoshop themselves wow (laughs) i haven't really thought about that I just thought like tone of voice more than anything, like this super excited, yeah, oh, yeah wow, wow, wow. And then you oh, meet yeah. them and then nothing like that. You're like, well, I'm really confused. Um, other social media, yeah. Um, don't bullshit because you'll get found out. And in the grand scheme of things, we're only shooting weddings or working in the wedding industry, which is massively important to our brides and grooms. But, you know, It'll, the only person who'll end up feeling bad about it is themselves. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So just just keep it real, basically. Um, and yeah, I think we we basically talked about all these points, but definitely don't worry about the the quantity side of things, the likes and shares. If you're putting good content out there, and it's a true reflection of what you can deliver, you know, whether you're shooting weddings, whatever you, your role in the wedding industry is if it's an honest reflection of what you deliver and very importantly, like we talked about before as well, if it's what you want to be booked for, that's, that's mm. the key. Um, don't fret if it only gets 37 likes. Cause if those 37 likes generate three inquiries, it's better than 300 likes and no inquiries, you know? So um, is that three things? Yeah, I think it is three things. I would also add to this to kind of round it off. I'm, I'm hoping we're kind of beyond this now, but you never know. So I'd add, don't obviously rip off other people's content and use it as your own, unless you're crediting it and sharing it for that reason. I agree. Um, I, think also, we're pretty, I think most I people... I think we're beyond are, that, right? I yeah, so. I don't think anyone would be daft enough to do that these days. I hope, so. I hope we are. <laughs> we didn't used to be, but I hope we are. But I haven't talked about social media like this for ages. And then the other thing is, like, obviously, if you're sharing like stuff you collaborated on, like just to credit everyone in it, it's just a nice thing to do. Yeah. But yeah, I think this you do's and don'ts are really, it seems like common sense, doesn't it? Yeah, I think so. I think that's the thing overall for me. It's trying to do, I think one of my rules of social media is always to have just stayed positive with it. Um, I've always avoided doing any rants about anything. Oh yeah, 100%. It's just so much of, of my social media, including my personal profiles, is geared up towards my business these days anyway i'm just like i'm not getting involved in in i totally agree i totally agree with that i also i think i think if it's for your business yeah you can put people off as much as you turn people on with that so yeah and i think like like, even like right now the whole lockdown thing i'm really cautious about what i share or say about that i'm very keen to if i decide to share anything about you know what's going on at the moment that it's from a positive angle rather than I don't want to get all political ranty about stuff and yeah you know, but I know some people do and that's fine but you know it's been my sort of personal role is you know yeah I think you have to think about what you again it's back to branding like what's your brand and what do you want to remember you for for us it's definitely not um being ranty I mean some people have forged careers on that but that's <laughs> not what I do I don't rant 
I also don't share political opinions because I think it's each their own and it's for the individual to decide. Um, and yeah, I'm never really ever miserable. I'm not really a very miserable person. <laughs> I'm quite cheery. Yeah, but yeah. I like to keep my personal misery to myself. Unless you've and... stayed out a bit too late the night before, Jules. <laughs> But well, then we don't really what? see you until when's that, be? When's that uh, be? We don't really see you until much later the next day, anyway. <laughs> you don't see me the next day. <laughs> Certainly not for breakfast, anyway. <laughs> Certainly not. Never I'd make a point of never going to breakfast when I'm in a hotel. Why would I? What's room service for? Good point. <laughs> breakfast is not a social occasion for me. <laughs> No, I'm much more of a night owl, <laughs> as we know. Um, right, no, just tell us a little bit about your mentoring before we end. So if anyone's kind of like what they've heard today and wants to some help with their business. Yeah, okay. Um, it's, it's quite simple, really. Um, it's tailor-made to people's requirements. I have a, a sort of an overall framework that I suggest. So um, obviously it's a, it's a review of, of the current business and where that is up to. Um, it's looking at the specifics of, of what they feel they need. Um, so it's a heavy business slant and marketing slant on it, but with some practical stuff as well. So, um, if people want to do, um, throw some shooting stuff in there, some lighting stuff. Um, I did a mentor, like a 12 month mentoring with, um, Sarah Glynn, um, who's an, yeah, she named chat to you in our, in our, at the Webfix episode the other day, so that's nice. Nice oh, little tie-in. It's she, real. <laughs> yeah, she she does loads of stuff with you and your wedding shows and stuff with Unveiled, and she had some covers with Unveiled as well, hasn't she? Yes, yeah. Great photographer. Um, and we did a real sort of mix of of stuff with her over a twelve month period. So there was there was a full day of shooting with a model, so we could look at different lighting techniques and things like that full day of business review of like, you know, literally everything from the ground up. Let's have a look at your website, where it's up to. Let's have a look at recent weddings that you shot, social media content that you're putting out there, everything that you could possibly think of. And then we started to structure things through the year to start to tweak how she was doing stuff. So, you know, at, at the next wedding, think about X, Y, Z. Um, she came and second shot a couple of weddings with me so that, she could kind of get a bit of a feel for mm. some of the stuff yeah, the saying to her face to face, you know, she could see me putting it into practice. It wasn't about me um, trying to get her to do things in the same way as me, but it was about her having a, an understanding of this is another way of, of doing stuff. And I think that can be really useful for people um, who feel like they're stuck in a, a certain way of when I get to a wedding, this is how I do it. Um, mm. So and, uh, and uh, all the way through the year, constantly reviewing weddings that she was shooting as well um, and commenting on it and working on and updating her website and gallery with new stuff. Because again, that was something that she, was, um, she wasn't confident with initially was choosing the best work that was representative of what she wanted to get future yeah. bookings from. Um, and once we kind of turned that corner of her kind of going, oh, yeah, you know, I, I, I see that this is this is the path I'm trying to go down. And I see that how this this body of work represents that better. Um, and now she's brilliant at doing it. She's up, updates her gallery all the time. And Yeah, she's absolutely flying. It's probably just that confidence boost, you know. And that's the thing. When it's a mentorship, you can work on whatever that individual like needs and feels like they need a bit of support with and help with. So if someone wants to get in touch with oh, you, about that we used to do, um, within all that, we'd also do a monthly Skype update as well. So as well as face to face stuff, we'd then do an hours catch up once a month, mm. just to, you know, almost on any other business. How are you getting on with stuff this week? How was your wedding last week? How's your wedding? What have you? I mean, that sounds up? ideal for someone. So how do people get in touch with you if they want to oh, just email me? Talk to you about it. Yeah. Cool. Just What's your email? Info at johnnydraper.co.uk. But find Perfect. me on, hit me up on the gram, Johnny Draper Photography. On what's your gram? Johnny Draper I know this, but they don't. At Johnny Draper Photography. You can put a super up as I say that, can't you? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that's, that's well within your editing capabilities, isn't it? Because I'm that good. <laughs> <laughs> Should I hold a piece of paper up? just comes up. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> 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 I'm 
<laughs> yeah, what I can do is just basically just go like, here's my Instagram look. <laughs> there I am. That's a really <laughs> terrible way of showing people my Instagram, isn't it? <laughs> That'll probably be the cover image that YouTube decide to. Uh... <laughs> yeah. No, it'll be like yanked. a Blair Witch, Blair Witch image. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Johnny. You've been amazing. There's so thank much you. in this episode for people to take away, whether they are a photographer or just in any aspect of the wedding industry. So thank you so much. No, thanks for having me. And really nice to chat. And um, yeah, stay safe.